Sir Geoffrey John Donaldson was officially confirmed as the Democratic Unionist Party's latest leader this week. It's third in just two months. In his first speech as leader, Sir Geoffrey insisted the only path to stable and sustainable government includes the removal of the Irish sea border and urged unity against the Brexit deal's Northern Ireland Protocol, which effectively imposed it. But the unity he seeks seems some way off, with the resignation of a DUP Stormont Assembly member on Sir Geoffrey's first day in charge. Well, in his first television interview since becoming leader, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson spoke to our senior Ireland correspondent, David Blevins, about how to tread the tricky path ahead and his concerns about rising tension on the streets of Northern Ireland. Sir Geoffrey, you have said the removal of the protocol is the only path to stable government in Northern Ireland. What if it isn't removed? Well, at the heart of the uh, Belfast or Good Friday Agreement um, are three sets of relationships. And there's a very delicate balance within that agreement as to how those relationships are managed. And one of the key relationships is that between Northern Ireland and Great Britain. And the agreement is very clear. The principle of consent protects the right of the people of Northern Ireland to determine their constitutional status. When you harm one of those relationships, you harm all of them by extension. And that's exactly what we have seen happening. Because our relationship with Great Britain has been harmed by this protocol, so too our relationship with the Republic of Ireland has been harmed. And indeed, uh, it has undermined and destabilised relationships within Northern Ireland itself. And we've seen that even on our streets. So it is imperative for all of us that we resolve these issues. I'm not uh, uh, accepting that this can't be done. I'm not accepting that there is no solution. I believe there is, and that's what I'm going to strive for, and I'm not going to contemplate failure. You talk about the tension on the streets. The DUP says the government is aware and is listening to the concerns, but this is the same government that promised your party there would never be an Irish sea border. So why should the loyalists who are protesting trust this government? Well, I understand their scepticism. I really do. Um, we've heard the Prime Minister, even in recent weeks, talk about uh, addressing the issues and the problems created by the protocol. We've heard him recognise that there, um, uh, there are difficulties in terms of the relationship between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, but not just in trading terms. The Prime Minister also needs to recognise that this impacts on our constitutional position. Uh, I'm prepared always to give people a second chance and I'm prepared to give the Prime Minister an opportunity now to put right what was done wrong to Northern Ireland under the protocol. But there are those who would say it's time for the DUP to put right the wrong of promoting a Brexit that was going to require a border somewhere. Is it perhaps time to look at the positive, to promote the benefits of having access to the EU market and the GB market? I believe there are opportunities going forward, but we can't get to those opportunities because of these unnecessary barriers. Much of our supply chain um, comes from Great Britain. Whether you are a consumer buying goods in a supermarket or a business relying on component parts for your manufacturing process, we need to fix that supply chain problem. We need to restore Northern Ireland place within the UK, both the market and constitutionally. And if we can do that, then yes, we will see the opportunities that will flow, uh, provided we can find practical solutions on trade with the EU. Let's talk for a moment about legacy. We've seen another two historical prosecutions collapse this week. You're a former soldier, so you will understand the concerns of veterans. You're also a victim. Two of your cousins were murdered during the Troubles. How does Northern Ireland draw a line under its difficult past? Is there an alternative to the government's proposal of a prosecutorial amnesty? Uh, I think we need a, a process that moves us from where we are uh, to where we can finally say, well, look, we've examined the past. We have uh, given people the opportunity um, to uh, explore whether there is the prospect of prosecutions against those who murdered their loved ones. Um, and, and then, yes, we need to move to the next phase of the peace process. We need to move our society beyond an examination of the past to the kind of reconciliation and healing that we desire to see in Northern Ireland. So we need some form of process that recognises the suffering of many, the injustice that many feel in Northern Ireland. I don't think you can uh, 
pull a veil over that. I don't think you can ignore that. Um, I think that if we're going to have healing, we need to have recognition and acknowledgement. You are the DUP's third leader in the space of two months. Is the party imploding because of what some would consider to be an own goal on Brexit that resulted in a protocol and unsettled unionism about power sharing and the prospects for Irish unity? I don't think it, it is to do with Brexit. Um, I think that uh, the issues that have arisen within uh, the DUP uh, have uh, multiple causes. Um, my job now, my task is to bring the party together again um, uh, and to, together on our common ground. Um, the DUP believes passionately in the union of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We believe passionately that Northern Ireland and all of its people are best served being part of that United Kingdom. We need to broaden the appeal of unionism. And therefore, we need to resolve our internal difficulties. I believe we're well on our way now to doing that. The meeting of the party executive um, this week um, saw unanimous support for uh, my leadership. Uh, it saw uh, people coming together, acknowledging the hurt that had been caused on both sides of the argument. And I think now we're moving away from that. And, and we've walked back from the idea of factionalism. Your deputy leader, Paula Bradley, this week apologised to the LGBTQ plus community for what she described as atrocious and hurtful comments made by some elected representatives from the party in the past. Do you share her regret about that? And how will you address any repeat of those comments? Well, I think uh, it is true, and it's not just uh, in the case of the DUP, that things have been said in the past that have been hurtful to people. And I think it's right when that happens that uh, we say sorry uh, and acknowledge that hurt. Equally, I hope in time others will be able to acknowledge that they have caused hurt, uh, for example, to people from a strongly held faith perspective. Uh, David, the kind of Northern Ireland I want is one where we can have respect for difference. Um, and in, in terms of looking ahead, I hope uh, that my colleagues will recognise that when, when we take decisions about social issues, uh, when we speak out on social issues, which we are entitled to do, that we do so in a gracious way, that we avoid langu language that is seen as intemperate um, or disrespectful. Uh, but where that happens, I will not hesitate to ensure that it, it, it doesn't happen again. Thank you very much for your time.